So that insight tab becomes a small little gold mine when you're talking about non-branded inbound search traffic on either shopping or search and how you can use that to leverage the titles in your feed. So when you're looking at a feed optimization, the first thing that you're gonna see is people aren't looking for easy to design, they're looking for quality. Well, that is probably a, a sticking point for some people. And then they're seeing, and then Google says, say, well, what people are searching for kind of matches what your title is, because it's again, a dumb machine. So today we're talking about standard shopping and feed optimizations. So Google has a hierarchy. The hierarchy is what influences the campaign to optimize essentially against inbound search traffic. So for the most part, shopping is inbound search. There is dynamic remarketing, but it's not necessarily feed-based. It's that's post-click, post-visit. And that's chosen based off of the user's uh, interaction with the site. <clears throat> For a side note, dynamic remarketing is primarily based on a few factors. Uh, one is going to be what did a person spend the most amount of time on the site looking at? Two, what was the exit page? Was it on a product, which is the less interesting product? Or the last one is going to be did they add it to the cart and bounce? So that's how dynamic remarketing chooses the products in the feed. But for the inbound search traffic, the there's a hierarchy that Google uses that um, I knew when it was confirmed with my uh, presentation called Data Feed Watch, where there's areas that you can make the needle move most often when you're talking about feed optimizations and how you actually test products and test the test the search traffic. Let's adjust the camera here real quick, and that starts off from a top-down hierarchy of first being the title. The titles of a product in the feed act a lot like a search category or search term. So we know that when we run DSA, it's going to scan the page, it's going to find common similar terms, and it's going to match that to inbound search traffic. And that title in the feed is the most important. That actually is about 50 to 60% of your feed optimization is going to be off of that title. Now there's going to be obviously other areas that we're going to cover that have a effect on the inbound search traffic, <clears throat> but that title is one of the most important. This is what we're telling Google. And this is what we're telling Google what we have. We've all seen feed optimizations go sideways or, or campaign performance go sideways when customers of ours or clients of ours change the title. And they change it to something that is a little bit more nebulous and more vague, um, like they're branding something. So, and I always use this, this same example, but if you have like, let's say a brown leather wallet and you call it chic, Google doesn't know what that is. You haven't really told Google what that product is. So Google's like, well, I'm going to look for people who are looking for chics, I guess, you know, it's a style, um, you know, descriptor, but that's not what an actual noun of something is. Now in person, place, or thing, you know, kind of going back to first grade here, that's Google is, is that kind of a stupid machine. And I mean, stupid machine is it doesn't interpret things. It is a machine that is going to learn based on solely what you tell it. <clears throat> and the title is the largest portion of what Google is interpreting your product is or is not. So some of the ways that we can identify a optimization is by looking at what the title is, interpreting what Google is seeing that title as, and comparing that to our, our campaign's search data, specifically search terms. Typically, we're going to run a standard shopping or performance max alongside of a search campaign or a DSA campaign, and finally, the search categories that's inside of the performance max campaign. The performance max campaign search categories are going to give us two things. One is this is the search term people use to convert when they're using the shopping network. And this is also <clears throat> the search term that is used on people that are using the search network inside of Performance Max. So that insight tab becomes a small little gold mine when you're talking about non-branded inbound search traffic on either shopping or search and how you can use that to leverage the titles in your feed. <clears throat> you can kind of connect those points. So when this says bestseller for e-commerce and subscription products, customer favorites, this is an old title that we're, we're updating now for this client. We're testing some different variations. This one works really well. When we look inside of the um, we look inside of the performance max, I think this is one that's working the best right now. Um, if we look inside the listing groups, 
the last 30 days, um, the conversions that are coming in on all the products. So I'm going to hop over to the P Max feed only because that's actually one that's working well. Um, this is best seller for e-commerce and subscription products, best quality. That's that's the winner here. And that's what Google is pushing the most often with the price. You're going to see the, the cost going up here. The reason why I chose this client is because we have the custom mailer boxes. There's there's hundreds of custom mailer boxes and they're all the, or not hundreds, there's hundred variations that we tested. There's 37 custom mailer boxes, but they're, they're the same thing. It's then there's a thousand different ways that you can actually um, build this box. You want a certain size, length, height, depth, color, everything. There's, there's different variations of this, but the custom mailer box, best seller for e-commerce and subscription products, easy to design versus best quality. There's a difference there in title. It's the same, it's the same product. It's just, it's a replication and it's a different style. It's a different skew. The only real true difference that Google can identify is the title. Everything else is pretty much the same. The search categories, the descriptions, all pretty much the same. So when you're looking at a feed optimization, the first thing that you're going to see is people aren't looking for easy to design. They're looking for quality. Well, that is probably a, a sticking point for some people. I want a custom, a, a high quality custom shipping box. That could be something that people are searching for. And then they're seeing, and then Google says, say, well, what people are searching for kind of matches what your title is because it's again, a dumb machine. It's simply taking what people are asking for and saying that matches because if you have a black leather wallet, people are searching for black leather wallet. Google's like, okay, you two should meet. Well, high quality, um, that's something is that people are searching for, great. That is something that that people are, are looking at, free shipping. Can't say that, so don't, don't do that one, but that one was really popular before Google got rid of it. Google got rid of the free shipping for extenuating text or essentially saying that you can't have a product um, promotion in the title, that's, that you do that through GMC promotions, you're not allowed to do that. <clears throat> but ships fast. That could be something that we're, we're going to be testing. It's not something that we've actually tried yet, but that's we just started making these optimizations a week and a half ago. So I don't have any data as to what it's what is working yet. But the title is going to be an area that we can sort of stuff. And what's nice about this is when you're on the site, the product here, just custom mailer box, it doesn't need to be on the page. It simply just needs to be in the feed. So as you start to kind of stuff um, a bit, and when I say stuff, I mean the, the old black hat SEO type of approach where you're doing keyword stuffing, where you're, you're trying to put as many keywords as possible in the headline of your, of your H1 tag or your title tag to make sure that Google knows exactly what that page is about. There's still a little bit of that element here in the feed. You can do that in the feed without doing it on the site. And you're simply looking at what is the difference between my one title and my other title that are going to, to the site. <clears throat> when you're talking about AB testing your site titles, unless you have different variations that you can technically make a different skew on and the client's okay with that and the, or the client would like that, um, you can do that if they look different or if they have a different price, different quantities, different combinations, different designs. It's very easy for this client because they have 15 custom-made box examples that can turn into 15 different products we could test 15 different titles on. So when you're looking at, well, how do I how do I change this? You could do that in the feed. You can even do it in, um, in the feed on the client side. You could do it in the feed and data feed watch. Um, I don't think that it's probably good to have a feed rule. It does get a little bit wonky, especially if the feed updates and rules don't stick. So I would actually do it before they get to Google Merchant Center. So either uh, the back end of the site or in the feed, if they're like tool like feed optimizer, data feed watch. Not, not necessarily when it gets to um, gets to Google Merchant Center. But the first part of a feed optimization that actually can move the needle. And something that I learned when I ran my own little basket company with Cosm is I ran a smart shopping campaign and I had my titles that were just like, you know, handmade basket. And I got kind of, you know, generic odd traffic. Um, it was looking for, you know, for everything between like, you know, hampers and like, you know, for laundry baskets. And it was just so generic. So I was like handmade, um, uh, custom, uh, native American baskets, uh, for gifting and weddings. Like I was very descriptive about what that handmade basket was traditionally used for. And I ended up like way overspending my budget. I went from trying to spend a hundred dollars a day and I was able to get like five and six. 
And I went to like $300 a day and I had to pull everything back because it started gaining a whole bunch of traffic. And all I did was just add a few different keywords to the title and it completely revamped the, the campaign. And I got a whole different amount of search traffic and that's actually what helped sell a whole bunch of baskets until we sold out. Now, Pals and I were not really good e-commerce people, so we didn't really make anything because we had our costs on that stuff. But besides the point, it was it worked really, really well. So I think a lot of times we'll look at, um, we'll look too in depth into like, what's the bidding strategy? What's the budget? What is, you know, the targets? What are, what is our, what's our signals in our asset group? And we have very little discussion about the feed. Um, Regina has always been really good at this where she, she made a kind of an SOP to update the feed as part of the standard operating procedure when making optimizations to an account or to a campaign. Um, and I think she's done, and, and sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm missing out on anybody, it's just what, from my experience of who I talk to on a daily basis. Um, but Regina has been really, really good at doing that. Um, so I think that that's something that is, should be added as sort of our SOP is, is feed quality and feed health, starting with the title. Does it make sense? Uh, what's the title on the site? What's the title in the feed? If I was Google, which is a machine, would I know what, what this is even about? Should we even add the, the brand name? to the title that can completely change a PMAX campaign by adding the brand name or removing the brand name. You'll actually start to increase or decrease the amount of brand traffic that you're going to get for your own products. That title is extremely, extremely important. That's half your optimizations are going to be made there. Now, when you get into the second portion, okay, now we've optimized the title. What about what's the next thing? So the description. The description is going to be very traditionally SEO. So if anybody's familiar with SEO and how Google Search Console works to so the hierarchy between the site title and the page title and the title and the description and H1 through H6 tag or alt text, all the good stuff, you're, you'll notice that, you know, besides like root domain and and an SEO friendly URLs and schema markup and, and all the good stuff that SEO works on, a lot of that's carried over into feed optimizations. It's the same thing. Google's using essentially the same engine. All they're doing is saying, okay, well, who are you? Be descriptive and be honest, and I can help find traffic for you because I use something called latent semantic indexing, which is Google's algorithm to match um, similar categories. So latent semantic indexing uh, will be able to find even competitors for you. And we've all seen that with PureBroad. We're like, how did our competitor end up as a search term for a branded um, broad match keyword. It's because Google is using latent semantic indexing in its own engine to identify similarities and commonalities between companies. And it does that with your feed. If I have my description say, you know, this is ABC products, Google's like, okay, well, I know that product. I know three competitors on the product and those people that are looking at my competitors or our competitors' products can also be in our audience. But if we, if we don't tell it what we have, Google could never make that connection. You're going to see that a few more times here as I, as I talk about these next steps all the way down to the GTIN, MPN. Um, you're going to see those, there's, there's benefits to that here. <clears throat> but your description is your second most important factor. Even regardless of what your web page says, your description is your second most popular um, area for feed optimization because it's going into detail being more explanative to Google what your product actually is. Again, this has all this has a large effect all the way into where the search category. It's like, hey, we're not showing up for this product. Um, these search terms that I think are good. I've added every single person that's Googled that product in the last you know 14 days as a signal. I'm still not getting it. Well, it could be that your feed quality might be low. So for example, if you're like, hey, I want people that have Googled, you know, a uh, custom mailer box and Google's going to say, thank you. I'll take that in consideration. What do you sell? We sell inspiration. Well, that's not a custom mailer box. The custom mailer box company that sells tells me that their title is custom mailer box. And they ship out custom mailer boxes fast. They're going to win. You're not. We're going to give all the traffic to them. So it's, it's works just like any other Google algorithm. It's interpretation. So for example, we know that our ad copy and our ad strength is based off of, well, is the keyword that you're looking for in the ad, is the ad that you have that keyword in driving to a final URL landing page that also says a variation of that keyword? If yes, good quality. The keyword is the ad is the page. You win. Our feed optimizations are the same thing. Is the person searching matching the title that also matches the description that goes to a page that has that product on there? Good. You win. 
it's very basic stuff, but it's something that I think we kind of skip over a lot because we don't necessarily, we take the person's product and we're like, all right, I see that product, good. And someone's going to see that product and they'll, they're going to know what that is, they'll buy it. And we told Google, that's not the product that we have for sale, but why are we getting those people looking for that product? We haven't really explained it very well. This description, it doesn't need to be as kind of keyword stuffed. It just needs to be relatively similar. So Google gives us less weight because we're going to be, we're going to take more creative liberties here. We're going to be a little bit more salesy, a little bit less noun uh, driven, a little bit more adjective and, and um, a little bit more focused on changing a person's status uh, or their daily life, not necessarily telling Google what we have, but we should mention it. So say goodbye to the standard notion of plain and bulky box. Our custom shipping boxes are durable, yet delightful twists on the classic shipper customize to help you, uh, to help wow your customers with the colors and detail that make your small business stand out. Great. Now, if we're looking for a person that's like high quality, you know, custom mailer box, well, we have shipping box, we have uh, the custom shipping boxes. All of this stuff is Google is just like looking for keyword similar similarities and they're looking for, okay, did you actually, are you, are you providing the product that people are looking for? And then when we hop into the insights tab in PMAX, we look at, well, what's people converting on? This is working really well. If you go to just the last seven days, um, custom gift boxes, custom printed mailer boxes, package box design, custom subscription boxes. And it looks a lot like our, our subscription products, right? So we're starting to get the search terms that we're wanting because it's in the titles and the products. The custom boxes, perfect. So again, when you look at custom boxes, this is what I'm now matching for. All of these things are perfect, 100% right on point. Now we can look at bidding strategy. Now we can look at daily budgets. Now we can look at even switching over to standard and getting more aggressive. Now we can look at placements. But anyway, the different variations offers you a, a more of a pay placement. So if there's any chance that we can not duplicate because Google Merch Center would just simply kick you out. Um, but if we can make different variations, different product quantities, different you know, accommodations, those are all things that can help with that placement. But it all comes back to is the title and the description matching what a person is looking for. That is, that's a big optimization in both standard shopping and performance max. It doesn't matter whichever one you choose. Then secondary is going to be well as the page content work too well because that's also dsa that's combined with performance max so the first one you have to look at this title second one is going to be description third one is going to be the uh this area here let me just hop into a product i'm just going to grab one this was on a call with google um the product type. This one here is apparently the third one that they're actually looking at. This is what is what's Google kind of categorizing the the audiences. Um, so we all know that Google has in market audiences, and that is going to be in the Google product category. That's static. This product type is actually something that can you can have more creative liberties with. You can actually type in certain words and phrases here that Google will interpret sort of like a title and a description. They don't have to be the you know, keyword code for pro a Google product category. That's Google's term. The product type is something we actually have sort of some creative liberties to type in. We don't want to be, we don't want to be overzealous and just start doing keyword stuffing here, but it doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, you know, similar to, to Google product category. This can be different and does offer us a different, it offers Google a different interpretation of our products. I was under the assumption that product type was going to be fairly static and Google was like, no, you can pretty much type anything in there, <clears throat> which is a little odd to me. I think we should still kind of keep with a good structure setup. They're like, yeah, just type anything in there. If you want to break out your own categories, just make sure to use the greater than symbol. I'm like, okay. Um, so we're going to start to change these up and test this. So I don't really have a lot of data right now to, to um, say otherwise. But this product type is something that we could be a little bit more, a little bit more explanative. If we wanted to say like a subscription, subscription boxes for e-commerce, that's different than moving and shipping boxes. We're not, a, we don't move. It's not a moving company. There's nothing here that you're, you're building a custom-made box to put your lamp in. 
it's for e-commerce stores to deliver their products to their consumers. And what's nice is that this is a growing industry because more and more and more subscription companies are coming out by the minute. This is something that is, is going to be an area that we should see the needle move pretty quickly. Um, so the product type, you can actually kind of restructure the product category uh, to your own interpretation, but I don't know what Google's going to match. There's very vague rules here that if I say subscription, um, you know, shipping boxes for e-commerce, I don't know if Google's going to match that. I'm going to test it, but again, this is the third level on the hierarchy. Um, I see seven chats, so I'm going to hang tight here um, just to see if there's any chats so far. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm rhythm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Oh, Regina, it's just that I'm loud. Supplement industry likes titles that start with brand name. I learned this the hard way with guys who had product titles for the industrial tape like medium with blue and nobody noticed for months. I will never forget that lesson. Now I look at product titles, 100% of e-commerce clients before launching. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Regina, that's a great idea. It's like medium with blue. That has nothing to do with, you know, industrial tape. That's, you know, if I wear a blue shirt, I'd be a large with blue. Google doesn't know that, you know, I'm, I'm tape. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of a good interpretation of that, that it's, it's definitely a, a stupid engine, a stupid machine. Uh, Regina, after you change the titles, what happened? Yeah, it, it started working. I mean, uh, this was wildly successful with us for a while. And in the beginning, it was really rough. Luckily, the clients did not know anything about Google Ads and did not realize our major mistake. Um, this was like way back in the day. And I did not offer the information to them. We were just like, wow, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. Hey, it just started working for no reason. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think, uh, Yusuf, you have your hands up. Uh, yeah, John, I have two quick questions. One, I think I know the answer to, but I just want to double confirm. What we see in GMC as title is not visible to customers, right? So it depends. If you went into the back end of Shopify and just mm -hmm. change the product title, it'll mm -hmm. be on the site and in the feed. I'm talking about more on the DFU. The idea is like this. Uh, let's The one we talked about, baby urns, for example. Yeah. Uh, I want to put baby urns in the title, let's say. But uh, from a customer's perspective, it's in the very bottom of the of, or at the very start. Like, doesn't matter. Uh, would it matter if I do it on the DFW? It's gonna read something like this. Maybe I don't know. Baby urn, uh, angel wings, infant urn, or something like that. But like, uh, it's mm -hmm. in Shopify. It's perfectly normal. But it's uh, true in DFW. I just kind of like stuff keyword, not stuff, but uh, true rules put some keywords in there, like if there's a baby urn if, or it's, it has a tag baby urn and put baby urn in the title, a rule like that. Will that be uh, visible to a customer? No. Or it'll, no. it'll be visible to, to um, well, I, actually, I, I take that back. It would be visible in the feed, yes, but that's okay because Google shuts off the title. So Ankar says, check this out. Uh, Google shopping short titles. Google has now released new attributes for shopping ads. A lot of you added short titles. Short titles are currently used in browsing text such as discovery shopping ads or Gmail. Um, see, you may have already noticed that the full title always gets cut off. Yep, you can make titles as much as clean as by adding short form titles. These titles have a maximum of 150 characters. Identical normal title, however, is recommended to have a short title between five and six, five. Excellent. So, is this a different uh, column in the feed? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. So, we have to set up an attribute, uh, mm -hmm. a different attribute. For for short titles, okay. So D DFW can do that. Um, if I think we so. didn't, yeah, if we didn't have DFW, I, feed rule is going to be horrible because you have to have. I don't think you can create a new column in a feed rule. Mm. But um, we'd have to use DFW or some other third party tool like Feed Optimize or some of that. I 
content API would work. I mean, unless we want to freaking export these things into Google Excel shit and mm. spreadsheets would work. But if we if we wanted to do this, let's absolutely, you know, if it's if mm. it's worth like, hey, this client has me over performance. I looked at the feed, it's actually low quality. Let's just add on DFW. Even if it costs us like, you know, hundred bucks a month to save the client, I'm totally down doing that. Um, you know, let's not let's not nickel and dime ourselves out of losing a client. But the, you know, something like that would be, this is a great idea. So this way we have Google's interpretation and then the display one, which is cool. That's, that's really great. Thank you for sharing that. I come bearing gifts from Google. Uh, first of all, shout out to uh, Unkar on our team, who's one of our strategists for spotting this and then Saptic for <laughs> teaching me. Um, but this is actually really cool. So if you log into your Google Merchant Center account, um, under all products, you'll notice that now there's this little handy dandy pencil icon. 